All right, guys, so we're going to continue talking about unicellular and multicellular organisms today. We're going to focus on um, all the ways that they're different and also the ways that uh, cells are specialized within multicellular organisms. So let's get started. First of all, let's remember that an organism is something that is living. So an organism is a living thing. And all living things are made up of cells. Now, let's remember, we think of cells as Legos for all living things. A cell is the smallest unit of life that is classified as a living thing. Now, within those cells, all organisms, or I guess all living things, um, must be able to perform the following life functions, which are movement, respiration, sensitivity, nutrition, which is finding food for energy, um, or finding energy for food, such as um, the plants uh, using energy from the sun to make food. They need that nutrition. Excretion, which is getting rid of the wastes. Reproduction, which is the organisms making more of themselves or replicating themselves, and growth. All right, so all organisms are made up of cells. Some organisms are multicellular. This means that they're made up of many cells. Multi means many or more than one. And some organisms are unicellular. The prefix uni means one. They're made up of one cell. And we can use our prefixes to help us to remember the terms. Remember that the prefix uni means one. So let's look at a couple examples of uni words. The first example is a unicycle. It has a bicycle with one wheel. And the second is a unibrow, one eyebrow that connects in the middle across your face. That's pretty funny. All right, so unicellular organisms are made up of one cell, such as your paramecium, your bacteria, and your amoeba. Remember, they're like a big blob. Um, most of the time, okay? And the prefix multi means many, such as a multifunction tool. That tool has many functions. Or a multimillionaire. That millionaire has many millions. I would love to be a multimillionaire. Or multicolored, like this Xbox controller. How many of you out there are Xbox gamers? Okay, I see you. All right, so let's remember multicellular are things that are made up of many cells, such as plants and animals and me and you, people. All right, so just as everyone in our school has an important role, such as me, your teacher, or you, the student, or Mr. Mike in the cafeteria, or Miss Kimothy and Mr. Tony who help to keep our school clean, or Miss Zink and Miss Kathy and Miss Godwin and Miss Morgan who are in the front office, we all have important roles in our school to keep our schools functioning properly. Um, in multicellular organisms, all living things, um, or all of the cells in a multicellular organism work together to make sure that that, that organism operates the way that it is supposed to. All right, guys, so before we get too far into um, multicellular organisms and the specialization of cells and uh, also 
further discovering the differences between unicellular and multicellular organisms, let's play a quick review game. So I want you guys to do me a favor, and um, on the next slide, we're going to use the next one for an example. Um, if the example that I give you in the picture here is a unicellular organism, you're going to hold one finger up. So you're going to hold up like the number one to show that it is a single cell organism. However, if the picture here um, underneath the words is a multicellular organism, such as a plant or an animal or a person um, or any other multicellular organism that I can't think of right now, um, you're going to hold up both hands with all of your hands out or all of your fingers out. So like a double high five. So you're either going to hold up the number one or you're going to hold up a double high five in the air as we review our single cell and multicellular organisms before we continue to explore how much we know. So here you've got an example of an organism. Is it single cell or multicellular? Ready? Three. Two, one. All right, everybody should be holding up the number one. That is a single cell organism. We know that because it looks like a blob and it's all made up of one big cell. Next one. Hold up your sign in three, two, one. All right, everybody should be double half having there right now because this fish is a multicellular organism, it's an animal. Excellent job. Let's see if you get the next one right. Ooh. Ready? Three, two, one. Ding, ding, ding. If you are holding up the number one, you are correct. This is a single cell organism. That is bacteria. All right. Here comes the next one. Ooh. Three, two, one. Hopefully everybody's still looking around the room at each other. Um, this is a chair. So we know that this is abiotic. It is not living. Therefore, it cannot have cells because living things are the only things that have cells. So there should not be a number one up. There should not be a double high five up. Um, your hand should still be down because this is not a living thing. All right, here's the next one. Don't let me trick you. Hold up your sign in three, two, one. All right, double high fives. Good job, guys. That's a plant, so we know that it's multicellular. Oh, here's our next one. Ready? Three. Two, one. All right. If you're holding up the number one, that means that you are correct. This is a single celled organism. Excellent job. All right. Here's the next one. Oh, let's see. Ready? Hold up your sign in three, two, one. One, 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 one. If you are holding up the number one, you are correct mundo. That is a single celled organism. We know this because it is all, all of the things are composed of them one cell and it looks like a big old fluidy moving liquid blob. Awesome. Oh. That little guy does not look nice. Is he a single-celled organism or a multi-celled organism? Ready? Show me your sign in three, two, one. Bum, 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 bum. All right. I love seeing all those double high fives. You guys are awesome. All right. Awesome job identifying your single cell and multicellular organisms. So now let's dig a little bit deeper into our knowledge of single cell and multicellular organisms and how they are different at a uh, cellular level. 
All right, so the structure of unicellular and multicellular organisms are very different. In a unicellular organism, of course, we've already figured out that the body is made up of a single cell. However, in a multicellular organism, the body is made up of numerous cells. All right. The exposure to the environment. So in a, a unicellular organism, the cell is exposed to the external environment on all sides. You guys see how the white is touching the cell on all sides. However, in a multicellular organism, only the outer cells are specialized to face the environment. Inner cells are devoted to other functions. Um, so, your skin is specifically designed to face the environment. That's why your skin um, also looks and feels a lot different than your internal organs. It's a lot more durable. It's your protective layer. All right, injury. So if in a unicellular organism, if the cell is injured, then that very often can cause death of the organism. However, in a multicellular organism, injury or death of some cells does not affect the organism as the same can be replaced by a new one. Um, so the cells can regenerate and repair themselves. So like this football player here um, who has definitely injured and probably broke his leg, not torn his ACL, something doesn't look right right about there. Um, but he's still going to live. He's going to be in a lot of pain um, because those cells have been damaged, but he's still going to live. That's the joy and luxury of multicellular organisms. Um, unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms also um, grow at very different rates. So unicellular organisms are usually very limited in size. Um, the unicellular organisms can't really grow very large um, because, um, remember, they're one cell. So when they start to get too large, it's hard for all of the nutrients and things to work their way around the cell. Um, in an efficient way to continue to allow the cell to grow and um, to get the nutrients it needs throughout. Um, so usually your unicellular organisms are very small and microscopic. However, your multicellular organisms um, can grow very, very large just by increasing their number of cells. So like this California redwood tree. Also, the lifespan of a unicellular organism is short due to its heavy workload. Remember that in a unicellular, in a single-celled organism, all of the seven life processes are carried out by one single cell. So think of one person in our school doing all the jobs. They're cooking, they're cleaning, they're teaching. Um, it just, oh my gracious, I can't even imagine. They're answering the phones, they're talking to parents, they're um, dealing with things that the principals deal with. Uh, I can only imagine how tiring that would be. Um, but in a multicellular organism, the lifespan is usually long because each cell has a specific job. So it only has one job to worry about. Um, the last thing that we're going to focus on today is specialization. And in a unicellular organism, one single cell carries out all the life processes. So it's like a jack of all trades. It can conduct all the life processes within that single cell. However, in a multicellular organism, different cells are specialized to perform different functions. Um, for example, your red blood cells are, organ are formed to carry... Um, your nutrients and oxygen throughout the body, your muscle cells and your epithelial tissues and, and all of the different cells within your body have a job. Um, so just keep that in mind that all the different cells in your body, in a, a plant, in an animal, because they're multiple cell or multicellular, each um, different type of cell 
within the organism has a different role and it's specialized to serve a different function. Uh, for example, a dandelion, the stem cells are going to be very different from uh, the plant or, or the flower cell. Um, so just keep that in mind. And also within a multicellular organism, your cells have a double role. So they have one job for themselves, which is to keep th their self alive so that the cell doesn't die. Um, but they also serve another role uh, within the organism. And we are going to learn more about that in our human body systems uh, section of this unit. But this will conclude uh, the first half of our living organisms unit. Awesome job, guys. You've made it.